This is the solution to homework set number 13 for ECE 341, Random Processes. The first problem is we're taking a program that we wrote earlier, uh, one for five card draw in poker, and from that trying to determine what the probability of getting full house is. Uh, the previous calculation showed that the probability should be 1.3%. I want to see if that's consistent with the Monte Carlo simulation. So the trick is run the program a couple times. Here you're supposed to run it five times and see how many times you get a full house. From that, find the 90% confidence interval and see if 1.3% is in that range. So given the data, I now have five data points. Find the mean, find the standard deviation, and here divide by the sample size because I want to find the population mean. Uh, that gives 5.7% from StatTrek with Four degrees of freedom, meaning sample size of five, five percent tails. I need to go 2.13 divisions left and right. So this gives me confidence interval of 1.1 percent to 1.35 percent for the uh, probability of getting a full house based upon my Monte Carlo simulation. The actual odds that we calculated, 1.31 percent, is in this range. So it seems like our calculation is correct. Uh, the thing to know about, about this problem, if you run a Monte Carlo simulation, I get a number. A single number doesn't tell you much. Every time I run the simulation, I'll get a different number. That makes it a random variable. With a random variable, I can use statistics like a t-test to give you confidence interval. The bigger the sample size, the more certain I can be as to what the actual probability is of getting a full house. So that's problem number one. Problem number two. Uh, here's some data from Embedded Systems. Three people jump and they measured their vertical leap. Just given person A, what's the 90% confidence interval for their height of their next jump? Or the height of each jump? So with that, given the data, find the mean, find the standard deviation. From StatTrek, I've got 10 samples, meaning 9, de nine degrees of freedom. 5% tails is 1.83 standard deviations or t-square of 1.83. So I want to go left and right, 1.83 standard deviations from the mean. That means that when A jumps, 90% of the time the jump will be somewhere between 0.25 and 0.49 meters. If I want a single-sided tail, what I'll do is find the 10% tail. Uh, from StatTrek, 10% corresponds to a t-square of 1.38. So I'll go to the mean, 1 is 1.38 divisions, that gives this area to the left of the green line is 10%. This is 90%. That's the 90% confidence interval with a single tail. I'll jump 0.28 meters to infinity. With two tails, I get the red line. Each tail is 5%. So that's problem number two. Problem three is comparing two populations. I've got two people jumping, A and B. I want to find out what's the probability that A jumps higher than B. So here the trick is form a new variable, w. That's the difference between the two. The mean of w will be the mean of a minus mean of b. It's negative, meaning b actually jumps higher than a. The standard deviation will be the root sum of squares, the variance of a plus the variance of b square root. Then the t-score is, here's the distribution of w. The t-score, the probability that a is bigger than b, is this area to the right of zero. So from StatTrack, if you type in the t-score of 0.88, I get 19%. There's actually two ways. If I type in minus 0.88, I get 19%, the right tail. If I type in plus 0.88, I get 81%, the left tail. So it helps to draw out the curve. Uh, this is negative. I want to find the area to the right of 0. So the probability I'm looking for is the probability that's less than 0.5. It's 19%. Part B looks at the population. A has an average, B has an average. I don't know what it is, but I can estimate it based upon the data. The more data I have, the more certain I am about what the actual average is. So in this case, take W being the difference between the two. And again, it's negative 0.09. Now the standard deviation drops as the sample size. Because the more data I sample, the more certain I am about what A's actual mean is and B's actual mean. So now the standard deviation is 0.03. To find the area to the right, 
um, is now 1%. So the distance from the mean to zero is now 2.79 standard deviations. That's because we're looking at a population now rather than an individual. Any given jump, A might jump higher than B. On average, though, A's average is or isn't less than B's. Based upon the data, I'm 99% certain A's average is less than B's. Problem three. Here I've got some data. I want to find out what's the probability that A has a faster reaction time than B. And here's kind of a problem. I've got data. I need to separate it into two bins. T-tests only work for comparing two different di distributions. So I've got to somehow take the data and split it into two groups. One way is to an apples to apples comparison. Just compare sober A versus sober B. The good thing about that is I have a consistent experiment, meaning I should have lower variance. The bad thing is I'm only using half the data. So if I do it that way, create a new variable W once again, difference between the two. It's got a mean, has a standard deviation. Again, I'm trying to find the true mean of A, the population's average. So I divide by the sample size. The T score is the distance to zero in terms of standard deviations. So this says that A, it's 66% likely that A has a larger, meaning worse reaction time than B. Again, the T table or stat track converts the T score to a probability. That's one way to do this problem. A uh, second way is use all the data. I'll use the sober A and an A after taking two drinks, sober B, B after two, two drinks. The good thing about that is I have more data. More data helps reduce the standard deviation. The bad thing is I'm mixing the experiments. I'm not having a consistent ex uh, experiment. Sometimes it's before drinks, sometimes after two drinks. That inconsistency will cause an increase in variation. Um, so try it either way. If I take the difference, create a new variable w, that's the difference in the two. The mean of w, the standard deviation of w, now I'm divided by six because I have twice as much data. The t-score is the distance from the mean to zero in terms of standard deviations. Then stat track will convert the, or t-table will convert the t-score to a probability. So using this approach, the error to the right is 77%. I'm now 77% certain that A has a reaction time worse than B's. Uh, problem five is what's the probability your reaction time after two drinks increases? Again, I've got a problem. I've got three different people, two different conditions. To use the t-test, I need to convert everything down to just uh, two samples, uh, A and B. Several ways to do this. What I chose to do is group all the sober data together, group all the data after two drinks together. Now that I have two populations, I can do a t-test. Let's have w be the difference in the two, the standard deviation for the difference. Again, I want to find the population's average, so I'm dividing by the sample size. And then I want to find out what's the distance to zero in terms of standard deviations. And this gives you from uh, StatTrack a uh, t-score of 2.75 corresponds to 98%. So 98% of the area is to the left, 2% uh, of the area is to the right. What that means is I didn't draw this correct. The mean is positive. So your reaction time increases after two drinks with a probability of 98%. So that's homework set number 13 for ECE 341, random processes. Again, for a t-test, I can test a single population or two populations. If you want to test more than two populations, that's where you use an analysis of variance, an OVA test. That'll be homework set number 15 coming up.